this is Pukeology Podcast, where science meets your hilarious puke stories and the tips and tricks to stop that up chuckle that you need. You never know what's going to spew out of her mouth. Here's my mama, Dr. Puke Nemo. Three of the most common early pregnancy questions are answered, like, what does the first trimester feel like? What are the chances of me having a miscarriage? And is cramping or blood inside my panties normal? Our doctor answers this and much more pregnancy pukeology questions in Pregnancy Pukeology, Episode 15, Early Signs of Pregnancy, Questions Answered. Want no more morning sickness, pregnancy nausea, or how about no more headaches or migraines? Visit our sponsor, nomonausea.com, the only natural way to instantly stop your worst nausea, vomiting, or headaches now. Or just place Nomo Nausea Ban on your baby registry for your delivery bag at Bye Bye Baby or on Amazon.com. And we're always there to take care of your little ones with the world's first Nomo Nausea Kids, now available at your local CVS store. Pregnancy humor in this podcast may just may make you want to pee your pants, like you don't have to pee all the time anyway, with crazy hilarious stories like, hold it in Sam, orange squash, looks yellow, and carpool chum. If you want to learn more about your pregnancy, humor and knowledge is the key to help you survive these nine months, and just know we're in this together. Today, you will learn the science behind your body's changes within the very first trimester of pregnancy, the statistics of the chances of actually having a miscarriage depending upon the week of pregnancy, and many of us experience puke, poop, and bloop different problems in the first three months of pregnancy. The Science of Puke, Pukeology. What does the first trimester of pregnancy feel like anyway? The flu. I say that because you feel tired and you may not want to eat due to an upset stomach or most commonly known as morning sickness. I personally think a man actually invented the word morning sickness because sometimes it lasts all day long or you might not even have it in the morning at all and it might be nighttime sickness. So I say you feel like you're having the flu because you feel under the weather. As your hormones are raging, it is so much for you to handle that sometimes you just cry at a random commercial. Oh yeah, and I forgot to admit to you that your boobs are always sore. I know I personally had to run to the bathroom every five minutes also. If you want to know more of why you have to pee so darn much and the baby's not even that big, and you'll find out why you have to pee continuously through all three different trimesters and for different reasons, check out my other podcast, Pregnancy Pukeology Podcast, Episode 11, Frequent Urination in Pregnancy. Is it normal to hate being pregnant? No. I hated being pregnant, but my babies are so beautiful that I forgot about the nine months of hell and I did it twice. And ladies, this does not make you a bad mom. And if you can't wait to get that baby out, I honestly know that I felt the exact same way. And sometimes just talking about it helps you to subside that. The best remedy will set you free. And even at your worst pregnant day, what always helped me is I would grab a stethoscope. A uh, stethoscope is those things that you put in the ears and you actually can hear your heart rate. Well, if you don't have one at home, go grab a nurse that's one of your neighbors or go into CVS and go into their minute clinic. I'm sure they'll let you borrow one. Um, but at the same time, don't forget to buy no Monaja kids while asking them to use their ears and listen to your baby's beautiful heartbeat. It'll make you feel much more alive Because you have a person growing inside of you. I know that personally made me smile every single time I wanted to give up on the whole pregnancy thing. I feel like this question, which is one of the most common questions, if you love pregnancy or not, is an either yes or no answer. Either women love being pregnant or they hate it. 
There's really like no gray area in between. And every pregnancy is so different. So the first one may be awesome, like mine was, and you want them to stay in there forever versus the next one might be a complete nightmare that you can't wait to give this baby their eviction notice. The good news is the second trimester is a lot more of what you see on TV and you can start enjoying the journey so much more. So what exactly are the chances of miscarriage per week? This is probably every pregnant woman's worst fear. Sometimes it can be so overwhelming that you have nightmares about it or that you question when you didn't even know that this was one of the most pregnant stressors that you had. Stress, which is unhealthy at any time, by the way, but especially unhealthy during pregnancy, will not cause a miscarriage. So relax. Besides the list of foods that you cannot eat during pregnancy, and if you really want to know, Pregnancy Pucology Podcast Episode 5, What Not to Eat During Pregnancy, um, that'll kind of answer it. But besides these bad foods and keeping your temperature, of not keeping your temperature body elevated, such as sitting inside of a sauna for a very prolonged time, you can pretty much do about anything else and feel confident that the baby is safe inside. Remember, they're living in their own little bubble. And yes, I mean a bubble, a nice jacuzzi type bubble. Don't forget, working out is great. Of course you can work out. Just no lifting over 20 pounds for the first trimester. Take a bath, get your nails done, go fly on an airplane for girls weekend. And don't worry if you were in the sauna when your baby was only a few weeks pregnant. Your beautiful baby won't die. And I said all those other fun things that we do for girls nights because a lot of people are nervous that they can't. And also I know that we all indulge in coffee and caffeine, but try to limit that to like one per day. In the past, If it's in the past, let it be in the past. And I say that because as long as you're following up with your OBGYN and you still hear that beautiful baby's heartbeat, well, they're still alive. They're still beautifully happy regardless of what's happening on the outside world. I know a lot of you guys are really concerned about miscarriages and what the probabilities are. So here they are. 9.4% of miscarriage at six weeks. 4.6% at seven weeks, 1.5% probability of having a miscarriage at eight weeks. And we get even less than that, less than 1% at nine weeks. So 0.5% at nine weeks. Most of you by this time, and usually by eight weeks, will have had your very first office visit and your OBGYN has been scheduled. If you make it down to 10 weeks, it actually goes to 0.7%. So the good news is you are under 1% chance of having a miscarriage as long as you wait eight plus weeks to tell everybody that you are pregnant. These percentages can vary greatly, so I don't want you to hold me to it as the sword in the stone. Uh, It also depends upon your health history, your age as a mother, maternal age, the father's age, paternal age, and the fetal heart rate. Remember, a high heart rate for a baby means they are healthy. High heart rate, healthy. Just remember the two H's. If at six weeks gestation, your baby's heart rate is less than 80, you have a 100% chance that you will miscarriage. Versus if your baby's heart rate is over 100 beats per minute, you will have 11% chance of miscarrying. That is a huge difference, especially at that six-week mark. So keep that heart rate high, babies. Are cramps and diarrhea normal in the first trimester? Implantation cramps and crap do happen. So when the baby is attaching to the uterus, don't worry. Stretching of the uterus and even worse, your round ligament, which is that ligament that's kind of like in front of your pelvis, Uh, If you've ever done a really good stretch where you lift your, put your leg behind you and kind of lean into it, that's where the round ligament is kind of stretching. And those definitely cause cramps. I know I have them terribly bad. These type of cramps in the absence of bleeding do not mean that you're miscarrying and is actually very normal. 
Now, if your cramps are accompanied with blood, then you need to see your healthcare provider ASAP. Go see your OBGYN, your midwife, all those others, especially if it is a bright red blood. If you soak a pad within an hour of bright red blood, it means you're actively bleeding. Go stop listening to what I am saying and go to your OBGYN or call them. Old blood will look very brown in color, and sometimes light bleeding happens during implantation. But if it's old blood, it's old blood as long as it's spots and not clots. Some women mistake their period for implantation bleeding and do not recognize that they're actually pregnant until later. Like me, I found out I was pregnant with both of my babies somewhere around the three to four month um, sector. Stomach cramps can sometimes be mistaken for diarrhea, which is a common side effect of high progesterone, actually. Um, That is the pregnancy hormone. It causes a lot of things. Uh, Number one, mainly relaxation of the body and all of the, the joints and stuff. So your hips can obviously go outward. But even more so, it may cause diarrhea, especially during spikes. And you get spikes when you first become pregnant. Implantation diarrhea is very common, as I stated, because in normal pregnancy, once you get further along, it's going to be associated with constipation. So feel lucky. Since the baby is taking all your nutrients, constipation happens, and it also depends upon the type of prenatal vitamins you're taking. I highly recommend a prenatal vitamin with a stool softener. If you're curious on like what's the best prenatal vitamins or why the heck do you have to take them in the first place, check out Pucology Podcast Episode 3 why take prenatal vitamins. You can thank me later for that tip, by the way. You're welcome. Remember that the pregnant immune system is also decreased, especially if you have baby number one in the daycare because they're little germ catchers. You just make sure that you don't get the rotavirus um, and that you stay hydrated because the rotavirus, for example, along with other viruses, can cause you to get even more sick with projectile vomiting and also with diarrhea. And puking and pooping are definitely a bad sign that you are losing your water content. So drink up, stay hydrated, and try to get, take that vitamin C so that you ward against a, a better immunity. Diarrhea later on in pregnancy does become a little bit more worrisome because we talked about constipation is very common. And I say that because in some recent studies, diarrhea in late pregnancy has been associated with miscarriages. Just keep an eye on it. Throwing up on a Tuesday? One puke story. Ah, ah, ah. I'm great at holding it in. LOL. In my first pregnancy, I had an hour and a half left on a bus journey. Sipped water and needed to be sick. Not only did I wait until I got off the bus, I managed to walk 100 meters, go to the bathroom, ask a shop assistant to find their toilet, get up the escalator, and then I puked as soon as I got to the toilet. I looked at the right state as though the shop assistant thought I was going to collapse. So she stood behind me on the actual escalator, walked me to the bathroom, which I had no idea, and I literally puked on the door, the toilet, and everything else. She just happened to be right behind me thinking I was going to collapse. So they then, from there on, my friends called me, hold it in, Sam. (laughs) Thank you so much, Samantha24, for that awesome puke story. It gave us all a giggle. So I was sick last night. I think it was maybe leaning over the bump, which actually did it. Uh, I heartily glad that I have really bad cold and my taste buds don't work because it was luminously yellow. I'm so sorry that I'm even telling you this. I've never seen anything like it. It reminds me back in the day when I was in high school and used to put highlighter fluid inside of alcohol bottles. And then it looked like I drank it all and puked my brains out after a rave. Mind you, I did eat four lemon slices, chips, and curry sauce. Don't judge me. I'm pregnant and I can eat whatever I want. I must say that I also think I ate a lot of orange squash because it came up yellow. (laughs) 
Blueby Blueby, thank you so much for your hilarious puke story. I look forward to you sharing even more of those brightly colored, nasty stories. I'm going to try to look on the bright side of throwing up. So here's one. I was in a carpool with a bunch of friends from work. Going to work, may I add. And all of a sudden I felt nauseous. I didn't want to tell my colleagues that I was pregnant yet because I was in this weird in-between phase and I was, you know, a little concerned about not having or keeping the baby. Upon doing so, one of my colleagues that was driving took a hard right turn. Now, I remembered that I ate leftover cold spaghetti for breakfast because I was craving it. The second she took the turn, I didn't couldn't even find the button on the mirror to push down the actual side rail before I could get that puke out. All I know is that my child window lock was placed on and I puked the same spaghetti all over the window. My friends then asked if I ever chew my food. This was the most interesting experience. I was obviously kicked out of the carpool for the next couple months. (laughs) Thank you, Jenny P2, for that hilarious puke story. You really chummed up the carpool, all right. If you have a hilarious puke story for me, please send it to me. I know that you want to because that crap is literally hilarious, whether it comes out of the top or the bottom. Be sure to make sure that you share it with me at pukeology at nomonausea.com or just tweet us, pukeology, P-U-K-E-O-L-O-G-Y, so we can all have a laugh because let's face it. We're in this together, ladies. Tips and tricks to stop the up chuckle that you need. First trimester pregnancy, we've concluded to feel a lot like the flu. You just feel crappy too. So let's go over some natural ways to help you feel better fast. Exhaustion. Being tired all the time is a sign that the baby is growing. Remember, you're creating a small human, so you're going to expend more calories. Your body temperature is going to rise slightly, so you're always kind of hot and sweaty, and you need that beauty rest. Try to get at least eight hours of sleep, ladies. If this is baby number two, it may be impossible, but really try. So I recommend or suggest having a consistent light workout routine. Think about swimming. You feel weightless. The movement is not damaging on your joints, even with the little added weight that you're getting. It helps to circulate the amount of water inside your body, which is actually called edema, when it gets swollen around your feet and ankles. And ultimately, it's something you can do with your little one too. So grab the baby, or not necessarily a baby, even if you have a toddler, a kickboard and go for a splash. Basically try to race each other, do something that's fun, or go brisk walking with the family. Yoga or other low impact aerobics are also a great way of getting a community workout. Now I say a community workout because ladies, we're all better in a group, in a clan, right? So this means take a friend to the gym. And have that be your time, your time with your bestie, go walk around the block or just go to a class, right? Something that's not too crazy, but something that you both get to enjoy. Don't forget, though, if you are in your third trimester and you're listening to this, never lay on the ground flat. Uh, Always have a small tilt greater than 20 degrees towards your right. Uh, This is called left uterine displacement. So you take the weight off of your aorta and you don't decrease the blood supply to the baby. Because remember, your artery and vein itself are right there and you could squish it if you lay nice and flat, especially with a really big belly. Exercise routines will help increase endorphins, also known as happy hormones, but you'll also wear yourself out so you can fall fast asleep as soon as your head hits the pillow. And that's what you need when you're pregnant. 
Recent studies suggest that smelling peppermint oil wakes people up and actually gives them energy. I personally wore my Nomo Nausea bands religiously during my first trimester because they're peppermint aromatherapy infused in an acupressure wristband. So you get the energy boost and the morning sickness relief too. It's a BOGO. Two for one. You should definitely go grab one. Nomonausea.com. Morning sickness. So I've done so many podcasts on how to stop morning sickness the natural way. And I'll quickly summarize them here. But if you ever have any other questions about stuff, go take a listen to the other podcasts. They're really good. Apples, lemon, ginger, and peppermint all help to relax the stomach so that it doesn't toss and turn. Acupressure at P6 on the wrist. And if you want more information, visit our sponsor, nomonaja.com. They have a great diagram. This will help you to show exactly where on the hand it's three finger distance from the first wrist crease in between the pointer and the middle finger tendon. This pressure upon the area, which can also be elicited as a response, from pain, like acupuncture, or from electrical stimulation, but I don't see all of us lining up to be zapped uh, on our wrist anytime soon. All three of these methods and modalities, I prefer acupressure, because it's just simple pressure, creates these anti-nausea hormones. And again, I personally like the effect of a two-for-one. You get peppermint essential oil and acupressure all together in the nomonausea band and they found a really cool way of inquiring what's called distraction technology and it's to make your brain kind of forget so this is clinically proven by the way to help stop vomiting in 30 seconds and is endorsed by physicians and OBGYNs across multiple countries of the world Again, I don't mean to blow them up so much, but I am very grateful that they are a sponsor for this podcast because you want to listen to more? So find out more home remedies for vomiting and morning sickness. Pregnancy Pugology Podcast Episode 4. You are what you eat, ladies. So there's quite a few foods that all of us pregnant women should avoid. Get out your notepads and get ready. It's not just because they'll make you sick, but more because they'll put your unborn child at risk. Do not eat anything raw. Meat, shellfish, sushi, unpasteurized milk, lunch meat, say goodbye to Oscar Mayer, unpasteurized cheeses, smoked foods, or even store-bought salads like the chicken salad, the egg salad, just because you don't know the temperature at which they're uh, storing it at. And there's many type of bacteria that can um, grow and manifest in that area. Fish is also good for you because of the omega oils. It'll make your hair, skin, and nails absolutely beautiful. But you don't want to eat the big fish, okay? These big fish have high levels of mercury, like king mackerel, swordfish, ahi tuna, marlin, or big-eyed tuna. Find out why these foods are so dangerous in Episode 5, Foods to Avoid While Pregnant. Cramps and ligament pain. Here we go. I know I suffered really bad. Icy hot or other capsin infused rubs or creams, um, sometimes they're found in patches, are sometimes great enough to change a temperature change. So from hot to cold, from cold to hot, you trick your body into forgetting that it's having pain in the first place. Or the good old mama's old fashioned remedy, if you're having pain in your lower pelvis, bust out that heating pad. I know I live in Florida, so I don't even think I have or own one, but sometimes it would be nice. Or take a washcloth, dip it in some water, and either heat it up inside of the microwave or cool it off inside of the freezer. And I guarantee you that change in temperature will shock your body into not really feeling the same amount of pain. Now, notice that I said a rub is better. Ask your hubby, gently massage the area that's hurting with this icy hot or capsin or something even with maybe little eucalyptus or peppermint. It'll definitely feel really good and you'll get that essential oil burning. Um, Remember that if you are cramping, I have another great way to stop it as long as you're not bleeding. Remember, cramping without bleeding in first trimester is totally normal. Put his D in your P. Yes. I'm telling you, go have sex. Sometimes the contractions of all of those girly muscles down there will actually help you to release the cramps. So think about it like this. If you're ever having a really bad cramp, what do personal trainers tell you to do? They tell you to flex your muscle even more, flex, 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 and then relax it and everything else around it relaxes. 
It's the same thing what happens when you have an orgasm. Or if you've ever had sex on your period, ah, it like relieves the cramps after you're done. And not to mention, you already have a lot of blood flow, so some of you ladies may be feeling hot and heavy for your hubbies even more than usual. Try not to take any over-the-counter medication for pain, um, but as a last resort, if you have to, always choose Tylenol. Never take aspirin or any other type of NSAID, which is an acronym for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen, Aleve, etc. Poop. As we talked about it in episode three, prenatal vitamins with stool softeners are your new best friends. But it's really important that I stress that you just need to be regular. No watery, no really hard. You just need to be just right. So get that Goldilocks effect by having a high fiber diet. Um, This way you can avoid both of those things and don't consume high fatty content. High fatty content will increase the amount of just nasty diarrhea that you'll have, but also can increase your bile because we women are young, are under 40, and unfortunately we get a little extra fat around us when we're pregnant, so we predispose ourselves to increasing the need to take out or remove our gallbladder with gallbladder attacks. Ladies, if you've had some of these issues or you are going through it right now, Just know every other pregnant woman on the planet is too. The second trimester is right around the corner, and I promise you, it gets way better. Now you know the science behind the three most common problems in the first trimester and how to help remedy them. By providing you with the best answers about pregnancy that there currently is to date, you now can love your pregnancy and all that has to come. If you love Pregnancy Pucology Podcast, let us know with a five-star rating, hearts for likes, but most importantly, don't forget to download this episode and share it with all of your Prego friends. Thanks for listening to Pucology Podcast in Pregnancy, episode 13, Early Signs of Pregnancy Questions, answered. Pucology Podcast, edutainment at its finest.